Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and in this video lesson we're going to talk about integers and opposites. To represent data that is less than zero, we use negative numbers, and a negative number is written with a minus sign. An example, negative 5 and negative 22. So note that even though this looks like a minus sign, we call it a negative symbol, and when we read the number, it's read negative 5, negative 22. Please don't say minus 5 or minus 22. We want to talk like a mathematician, so negative 5, negative 22. The negative symbol, you'll note, is in front of the number, or to the left of the number. We don't write it like this. This would be 5 minus, and then you're missing something that you're subtracting. So if you want it to be a negative, the negative symbol has to be to the left or in front of the number. Data that is greater than zero is represented by positive numbers. These are the numbers that you've dealt with all through elementary school. Positive 13, positive 89. However, when we read it, we don't read it as positive 13, positive 89. This symbol for positive is a plus sign. It's called the positive symbol. And we don't go around writing our numbers with a positive symbol in front of it. When there's no symbol in front of it, like you see here, just 13, 89, then it's automatically assumed it's a positive number. And this little number line down here is very important. We're going to be using this a lot. Zero is neither negative nor positive. Zero is just zero. But on the number line, all of the numbers that are to the right of zero are greater than zero, and these are the positive integers. All of the numbers that are to the left of zero or that are smaller than zero are called negative integers. Now you're used to seeing a number line that starts with zero and increases, so you're used to seeing the positive numbers, but now our number line is going to extend to the left of zero and include our negative numbers. So it's very important to remember that. Opposites. Opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero, but on different sides of zero. An example would be five and negative five. So here's our zero, and five is one, two, three, four, five units to the right. So if we start at zero and we go five units to the left, one, two, three, four, five, we land at negative five. So these are opposites. The same is true for 3 and negative 3. We start at 0, we can move 1, 2, 3 units to the right, and that's our positive 3. If we move 3 units to the left, we land at negative 3. So basically opposites are a positive number and a negative number. 3 and negative 3, 5 and negative 5, 100 and negative 100. 5,012, negative 5,012. It also works for fractions and decimals. One half, the opposite of one half is negative one half. 0 0.6, the opposite of six tenths is negative six tenths. So those are opposites. Positive whole numbers, their opposites in zero are called integers. So in elementary school, you worked a lot with the natural numbers, or they might have been called the counting numbers. Those are the numbers that you count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Whole numbers include your counting numbers, but they also include zero. So a lot of times when you're naming the different number classifications, natural numbers is left off and they just begin with whole numbers. But sometimes you'll see the natural numbers. But whole numbers, they're all positive, and it also includes zero. Positive 5, positive 500, positive 25, and so on. Integers include all of these positive whole numbers, but also their opposites, meaning the negative whole numbers. Negative 325, negative 1, negative 6, negative 99, negative 14. So let me ask you some questions. What is the opposite of 3? Well, remember there's no sign here, so that automatically means it's a positive 3, so the opposite would be a negative 3. What's the opposite of negative 3? Well, the opposite of a negative is a 
positive 3, or you could just write 3. And this one says, what is the opposite of the opposite of negative 3? Hmm, pause the video, think about that, see if you can come up with the answer. The answer is negative 3. What is the opposite of a negative 3? It's a positive 3. And then what's the opposite of that? Negative 3. Positive and negative numbers can be used to represent real world quantities. We see this all the time. Football. Mmm. Texans versus Cowboys. That wasn't a very good game last week, was it? Okay, if we have a gain of 10 yards, the gain is the clue word that tells you that we're going to be increasing, that this 10 is going to be a positive 10. And what's the opposite of a positive 10? A negative 10. So go through and see if you can find what would mean a negative 10 yards. And that would be down here, a loss of 10 yards. Loss is the opposite of a gain, so this would be a negative 10. It's very important that you know the, these clue words that are going to tell you if you're talking about a positive or a negative. Let's look at the temperature. We have 10 degrees above zero. This above zero is your clue word. That means that it's going to be a positive 10. Remember, a thermometer is just like a number line, except it's vertical. So you have your zero. I'm not sure where zero is. I can't really see, but you have your zero, and the numbers above zero are positive. The numbers below zero would be negative. So if we have 10 degrees above, that's a positive 10. What would represent a negative 10? A negative 10 degrees. Right here. 10 degrees below zero. This would represent negative 10. Okay, let's talk about money. Deposited $10. Do you know what it means to make a deposit into your account, into your bank account? It means you're putting money into your account. And when you put money into your bank, your balance goes up. So when you deposit money, that's an increase or a positive 10. And the opposite of depositing $10 would be a negative ten dollars. So where can we find negative ten dollars? Right here, a withdrawal of ten dollars. When you make a withdrawal, that means you're taking money out of your bank account. Yes, you might be putting money in your pocket, but your bank account balance is decreasing, it's getting smaller. So a withdrawal is negative. So this would be the negative ten dollars. And those go with our money bags here. Okay, what else do we have? Um, oh, we have the little fishy. What do you think this means? Fish swimming in the ocean. Sea level, right? So we have 10 feet below sea level. Below is the clue word. That means that this is going to be a negative 10. And the opposite would be a positive 10. 10 feet above sea level. That's going to be the positive 10. Or you can write it just as 10. So you have above sea level. Sea level is considered to be zero. That's something that you need to know. Sea level is right here. Here's the sea. This is where it starts. So the water's underneath here, the air's above it. This is sea level, this is zero. And then the opposite of below is the above, positive 10. Then we have a gain of 10 pounds. So we're talking about weight that goes with our scale. If you're gaining weight, is that a positive or a negative? It's a positive. And the opposite would be the loss of 10 pounds. That would be a negative 10 pounds. And I think our last one is going to be the hot air balloon. Descended 10 feet. All right, so this is a word a lot of you might not know. Descended means to go down. Say you're on, a, on an escalator. When you descend, or stairs, when you descend, you're going down. So it's a negative 10. And to go up would be ascend. And that would be your positive 10. So again, as you're going through different situations, now that we're dealing, especially word problems, now that we're dealing with positive and negative numbers, you have to look for those clue words that are telling you. Are you talking about a positive number? Are you talking about a negative number? All right, nice job, Bobcat.